Welcome back, friends, to the Hobby Barn Basement. Uh, this is the fourth and final build video of the Hangar 9 OV-10. Um, I wanted to give my final notes uh, and build notes and where I'm at with this project. I apologize for the uh, slow updates. You know, sometimes build processes run a little longer than you'd like. Uh, I had mentioned I wanted to go on to the gear and electronics installation. So I'm going to start with the mains, which, by the way, were very straightforward. Uh, there was very little to do with this. As you can see, they just bolt right in. There was nothing to it. There's a metal plate on the inside of this. They just screw right in. You tighten them down. Um, because I'm only using a 12-channel radio, I am unable to do the, uh, re the doors, the gear doors. But these, uh, the kit also came with uh, these nice covers they were a perfect fit they just screw right in uh, i was very pleased with that so for right now that's uh, what i'm going to use um, i do want to make a couple of quick notes on the nose gear however um, when you do the nose gear installation the uh, instructions are a little vague as to whether you put that gear you mount it on the inside of this or the outside uh, you mount it from the bottom folks not the top it, it will fit either way uh, but it needs to be mounted from the bottom of the fuse and as you can see like the mains it's got a metal plate it's epoxied in and screwed in it, it's very stout um, also when you do your nose gear servo installation uh, of course it has its recommendations like everything else um, there really is only one way to do the servo installation and that is like this wire up because uh, if you try to flip it around and do it the other way the rod that is supplied will not work it's not long enough so you'll end up creating your own which for most modelers is not an issue uh, however if you're trying to just stick to what you have or what's here this is what works uh, i ended up simply clipping it down I'm in the third hole, you drill it out. Uh, also, you're gonna need to trim your throw way down on this servo uh, for the simple fact that the ball link at the bottom where it connects to the landing gear, obviously if it's got too much throw, uh, it's gonna pop off. It just the torque from the, the servo will pop the rod off. So I trimmed mine down to probably 50% and you don't need a substantial amount for steering because it, it has quite a bit without it. Um, one other point of note while I'm here, uh, I put some protection over the servo wire. When this is retracted, this comes up under into the cockpit section under the center console between the pilot's legs. Um, as you can see, there, a little difficult, but there's a console that runs up underneath. And that's where the servo goes. I know it's a little difficult to see right there. Um, that might help. Either way, the servo goes up underneath and it goes into between his, his legs in the cockpit. Uh, if this is any longer than the way I have it shown here, it won't fit into that console. It will rub, it pushes up into the cockpit, it doesn't fit. So make sure you clip the end of your servo down appropriately. Put a little protection over your servo wire. You're also going to need some type of a rubber band or uh, something that's flexible enough to allow the wire to move as it comes up and down and will keep it from getting bound when the retract comes up and down. Uh, beyond that, that's really the only point of note that I have for the nose gear. It went together just like everything else. Uh, it was very straightforward. Um, as far as the wiring for this aircraft, uh, it, as I mentioned in my previous video, the Avian ESCs, I created mounting plates for and epoxied them uh, on each side. I screwed the ESCs in, uh, you know, one on each side, as I had mentioned. Uh, so they're here. I created a simple mounting system for the three required batteries, the 7.4 volts. Uh, there is shelf liner underneath. And then I had an old strap, an old uh, Velcro strap that I just simply put around there. And it's very stout. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I did uh, end up finding 
a 20 channel power safe spectrum receiver, which for nothing more than convenience, that's where it is. That's what I'm using. Uh, also, the retract unit is next to it. And as you can see, the kit came with pre-cut holes for your on-off switches, which you know you may or may not choose to use, but you know one for your receiver, and then subsequently one for your gear. Uh, point of note while I'm in here, uh, you have to turn the receiver on first uh, and let it come on, and then turn your retract unit on. If you don't, it will cycle the gear. It notes it in the instructions, and yes, it will do it. So be conscious of that, folks. Um, know which side your on-off switches are on and, and be prepared. Uh, I couldn't imagine having that happen while your model's assembled. You're out on the field and you flip the switches the wrong way and then your gear goes up while your plane is on. So bear that in mind. Uh, one other point of note. If you're not using 20 channels and you're only using 12, at least the way I currently have my setup done, because uh, you've utterly got to have an open channel for everything, for your nose gear, for your ailerons, for all four flaps, both of your um, throttles, etc. You're going to have to Y something, either your throttle channels, which I wouldn't recommend. Mine ended up being the rudders. Um, if all else fails, you know, you're going to have to make a decision about what works best for you. So at some point, there's a 20-channel radio uh, that's going to have to take place in my future. So, And I'd also like to have the, the functional gear doors for this plane. But just points of note. Uh, lastly, as you can see, I changed some labeling. Uh, I went back uh, just to make it more simple. A lot of guys will use color coding, uh, which works great also. I just don't happen to have uh, multiple colors of electrical tape to use. So I did simple green tape with you know left rudder right rudder which i know isn't necessary on a y harness like that but for my own uh, satisfaction i did it on everything that's how it ended up um, final notes on this wiring i foamed the holes to protect the wires they're wrapped inside the wings for protection um, i did end up as i had mentioned in my previous video cutting holes I've got a little bit more to do here and here to protect these wires, but they are wrapped inside to protect them also. Um, you need a little less on the main fuselage wires. You need a little more in your boom wires, just so there's some flexibility to put them in when you install them onto the plane. Uh, it, it's just easier. Uh, again, these are... Uh, marked the same way you're going to want to try and keep these as short as possible uh, make sure they have a little flexibility uh, so that they'll fit uh, and one last note uh, before i close this video off there is a replacement servo that i found uh, i had previously mentioned that the uh, uh, elevator servo i ended up using a spectrum i was not satisfied with that so I researched the, the high-tech servos as I wanted to keep this system completely in that realm. Uh, and the D951 standard high-tech puts out ample amounts of torque, uh, upwards of 500 ounces, which is more than enough for a 40-pound aircraft, I would hope. And uh, I'm very happy with it. Uh, so the, the Spectrum replacement, yes, it will work just fine. But if you're trying to keep your system consistent, uh, the high-tech D951 is a good drop-in fit. Uh, it's a standard size, just like all the rest of the servos. It's just far, far higher uh, in your torque ratio. And, of course, it's digital. It's programmable if you need to uh, with the, the uh, high-tech programmer. Uh, and it's uh, rated as a, as a high volt, so it will accept anywhere from 4.8 volts up through the 7.4 volts. Uh, and that's it, folks. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this build series. Uh, after this video drops, I'm going to show a, a brief uh, taxi test uh, as a separate video, uh, showing everybody just a quick uh, look uh, of the OV-10 in action out in the, <laughs> out in the carrier field yard. Uh, and then hopefully there will be a maiden sometime in the near future. So take care, everybody.
Uh, like and subscribe, please. Leave any comments uh, or questions. Please don't free, uh, hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Thanks again for watching.